Alright guys, here is a uh, video, this is the last kind of major problem we're going to do from chapter 6, chapter 6 on the normal model, and this is a tough problem, it's one of the toughest types of problems there are, a lot like problem D on the back of that worksheet you guys had to do. So here we go, here's the idea, we have a company called Duralast, they make batteries, they make great batteries, so they claim, so they claim that they have batteries where 15% of their batteries lost longer than 20 hours, and they also claim that only 5% last shorter than 14 hours. And what they're asking us is what mean and standard deviation are their batteries working with? And these are parameters. Remember, parameters are mean and standard deviation. That is theoretical, again, in theory from the normal model. So they give us a little bit of information. They don't give us the mean. They don't give us the standard deviation. We have to find those values on our own. But they do give us two important pieces of information. The first one is that 15%, and I like to draw the pictures. I really think that they help me. 15% of batteries last longer than 20 hours. And they also tell us that only 5% of batteries last shorter than 14 hours. So these numbers are important because they, they tell me that 15% are over 20, so the arrow is going over. 14% of, um, I'm sorry, 5% are underneath, so the arrow is going to the left, of 14. Now I'm going to help, I'm going to use these two things to build some Z scores. Now my Z scores formulas involve a value of interest minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's for each one of these, okay? Now, since this, these two information, these two uh, hints or clues they give me are both coming from the same set of data, the mu and sigma, I'm sorry, I should be using a sigma down here, the mu and sigma should be the same for both of these equations, but the problem is I don't know either one of them. But I do know this, I know that here I'm talking about 20. The number of interests is 20 for this particular useful information here. And I don't know the mean or standard deviation, but I do know that 15% lasts longer than 20. So I got to think, what z-score is 15% above it? Now I have to use invert norm, because invert norm will give me z-scores. I got to be very careful with this one though, because this one says 15% or above, invert norm only takes below, so I have to invert norm 0.85, and I get about 1.04. I am going to store that as alpha A here, because I'm going to need that value later on. So I come back over here, this value is about 1.04. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. The value of interest over here is 14 hours, minus the average divided by the standard deviation, and I need to find a z-score that has 5% below it, and I don't need to change anything here because my uh, invert norm likes using um, values below, so I'm going to invert norm 0.05, and I get a z-score of negative 1.64, and I'm going to store that as alpha b. So um, that's negative 1.64, so that's going to go right here. And I'm going to put a little B right there and a little A right here so I remember where I stored those. So now I need to solve both of these equations for mu. So I'm going to be careful. So multiply both sides by uh, sigma equals 20 minus mu. Subtract the 20. Sorry, my sigma looks a little weird there. Equals negative mu, and then I got to divide by that negative because I don't want that negative there either. So I got to divide everything by negative. So that makes negative 1.04 sigma plus 20 equals mu. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Multiply by sigma, negative 1.64 sigma equals 14 minus mu. I'm going to subtract the 14 from both sides. So I subtract that 14, and I get negative mu. And once again, I've got to divide everything by negative because I need to get rid of that negative in front of mu. So I get positive 1.64 sigma plus 14 equals mu. Now, let me scroll down here so we can have a lot more space to work. Now, notice both of these equations, both these equations are equal to mu. And since they're coming from the same information, those mu's have to be the same, which means I can set them equal to each other. So negative 1.04 sigma plus 20 equals, I'm trying to be really neat here, equals, whoop, let me erase that here, equals uh, 1.64 sigma plus 14. So let's see here, let me subtract the 20 from both sides. So if I subtract the 20 over, that's going to give me a negative 6. Let me subtract the 1.64 over. So I'm going to subtract the 1.64 mu over. Now, um, I need to use these numbers that I store on my calculator, but I got to be very careful with this. Um, because the numbers are stored, remember it's, it was a positive 1.0 
1.64 that was stored and a negative 1.64 that was stored. So I got to be really careful. I should be getting a number somewhere around negative 2.68. So if I'm using just my common sense here, negative 2.68 should be the number I'm getting that equals negative 6 because remember I subtracted this 20 over as well. Um, so now when I go to my calculator, I got to be really, really careful here because I got to think right now alpha, whoop, sorry, right now alpha A is a 1.04 positive. So I need to multiply that by a negative real quick to make it the negative 1.04. And then remember, right now, B is already negative. Remember, go back to the very, very beginning here. I stored B as negative 1.64. So I technically need to add alpha B. So if I add alpha B. I should get that negative 2.68. I'm going to store that as alpha C. Now that can be a little bit confusing. So I'm, I, I'm, you know, think in your head what that number should be first, without even thinking about the A and B on your calculator, and that should give you an idea. Then I need to simply divide both sides by that negative 2.68. Divide by negative 2.68 on my calculator. That's going to be negative 6 divided by alpha C. So let's see. I get negative 6 divided by alpha C and I get a standard deviation of 2.24. So I get a standard deviation of 2.24 hours long. So that must be my standard deviation. Now how do I find mu? Well look right up here. I got two equations right here and right here. They both plug in sigma and I can get mu. I could use either one of them to figure out what mu is, but just be careful. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to store this mu value as alpha d. Okay, I know I'm getting a lot of stored values here, but I'm just trying to be very accurate. And right now, let's use this first one. Right now, alpha a, again, is a positive, so I need to multiply it by negative 1. Okay, so there's the negative 1.04, whatever. I need to multiply that by alpha d. Okay, and that was the stored 2.24 or 2.2377 standard deviation. And then I have to add 20 to that. And I'm just following this equation up here, and I get an average of 17.68. And you could have used this other equation here as well. But again, be very, very careful with your A's and B's that you have stored. So I get an average of 17.68 hours right here. So again, don't let the storing of A, B, C, and D confuse you. To be honest, if you don't do any storing and you just use two decimals, right? Use negative 1.04, negative 1.64, ignoring the storing and just do the math kind of on your own, making sure you're keeping negatives and negatives and so forth and common sense. You should get an answer that's that's honestly very, very close to the same what I'm getting. My answer is very accurate because I used all stored values, but Again, if that if the storing is what's really confusing this problem, just do it as normal. It's not too bad. So again, the final answer to the questions is this this company must have an average battery length of 17.68 hours with a standard deviation of 2.24 hours. Okay? So again, it all started with the two things given to me, and I had to think this first one said 15% were more than or longer than 20, so I'd be careful finding invert norm, because invert norm only takes in the bottom 85% to get the 1.04. Over here I was told that five percent last shorter than 14, so invert norm just used 0.05 because that was normal, negative 1.64 uh, there. I solved each one of them for sigma, and then, uh, I'm sorry, I solved each one of them for mu, excuse me, and then I solved, put those two mu's together since they were the same mu's in each problem. And again, if the whole storing things confuse you, just round to two, or if you want to round to three or four decimals in your work, and just use the by hand, don't do any storing on the calculator, you'll probably have a very accurate answer. Obviously, the more decimals you keep, the more accurate you will be. But that is probably about the toughest uh, mathematical problem that deals with normal model. And again, you don't know the standard deviation and the uh, average. You have to find them. So it's a pretty good problem. We're going to practice a lot with this tomorrow. See if you can do D on your homework assignment tonight with that. All right. Have a good one.